Let's make a Kurjigo friendly star block. But what do I mean by Kurjigo friendly? Welcome back to Pattern Pool TV. I'm Monica, and if you're new here, I post a video every week about how I make my Kurjigo quilts. Right now, we're doing a free worldwide Kurjigo along, where each week I show you how to make a different Kurjigo block. And in the end, I'm going to show you how I join it all together using my easy cover strip method on the back, just in the same way that I did with my string quilt. This is part four of our free quilt as you go along. You can join in at any time and if you'd like to know more, check out our log cabin video and I'll also put a link in the description where you can read more about it. Now no problem if you're not joining in with our free quilt as you go along. This is another fun block that you can learn that you can add to your patchwork and quilting repertoire. So back to why I call it quilt as you go friendly. Well, there are many different patchwork star blocks, but the one thing they all have in common is that the points finish a quarter of an inch away from the edge. There are many different joining techniques for quilt as you go, and some of them use more than a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so your points may end up not so pointy. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this quilt as you go friendly star block where the points don't finish close to the edge so that you can join it together using your favorite quilt as you go joining technique and you won't risk losing your points. Now, if you're joining in with our free quilt as you go along, you'll need to make two. If you wanna see the joining techniques that I use, check them out on my channel. I have a whole playlist of them. Now, this is not a stitch and flip block. I'm gonna show you how to piece the star together and then we're going to quilt it together with our batting and backing. To make the star block, you're going to need for the center, one three and three quarter inch square. For the background, you're going to need eight three and three quarter inch squares. And for the points, you're going to need eight two and one eighth of an inch squares. You'll need your backing square, which is 10 inches. And then you'll also need your batting, which is cut nine inches. So that's going to give us our half inch gap all the way around the edge. Now, please note, this is a 10 inch star block. And because I'm joining my quilt together using my easy cover strip method, the batting is cut half an inch smaller all the way around the edge. But if you wanna make your own star quilt, work out what method you're going to use first of all, and you may need to cut your batting and backing bigger and then trim it back before you join it together. To prepare for sewing, mark a diagonal line going from corner to corner onto the wrong side of each of our two and an eighth inch squares. Take four background squares and position a star point square in the corner and position them in the same corner onto each of our background squares, making sure that the diagonal is running across the corner. We're now going to head to the sewing machine and sew on our marked line. Now, a little bit of a tip is you're better off to sew to the outside edge of that marked line rather than the inside edge. And I'll show you why in a minute. So at the sewing machine, I have a neutral colored thread on. And because I'm piecing at the moment, I'm going to have a size 70 slash 10 needle inserted. I have a smaller stitch length of two. And for this step, I'm just using my standard foot. To prevent your work from being chewed into the hole when you first start to sew, get a scrap of fabric, fold it in half, because we need a double layer. This is going to become our leader. So start stitching on this. And then when you get to there, you can then go straight onto your diagonal line. Now remember that little tip I mentioned before, if you can, sew slightly to the left or the outside of the marked diagonal line. Now we are going to trim this section away, a quarter inch away from that stitching line. But before we trim, I always like to just fold my top square over and make sure that the corners are all meeting on the underneath square. Stitching slightly to the outside of my marked line ensures that my corners will meet. So continue pressing all of your squares in the same way. Flip the smaller square back and line up the quarter inch line on your ruler on the stitching line and trim away the excess corners. Now do the same to all of your other squares. 
Repeat the same steps but to the other side. Now take our smaller square and place it right sides together in the opposite corner and we want our diagonal line to run across the corner, not like this. So like that. And then we're just going to stitch them all in the same way. So now we've made our star points, let's lay the block out. Separate the block into three separate rows to sew it together. So I'm going to sew all of the pieces together on this side and I'm going to pop a pin in so that I don't get confused as to which edge I'm going to sew. So I'm going to sew all that with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to chain it all through in one go. At this stage you could use your quarter inch foot but I'm just using my standard foot and I've moved the needle position over so that the distance from the edge of the foot to the needle is a quarter of an inch. Now sew on the other squares. In the middle row, press the seam in towards the middle and in the top and bottom row, press the seams out. From the back, when you have a look, you'll be able to see that the seam allowance is facing in opposite directions going from row to row. This will make it really easy to join together. To sew the rows together, sew the bottom row onto the middle row with the right sides facing. To make sure that your seams align, Pop a pin in the top layer going through the stitching line about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. Then about a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge, go into your seam, bring it out the other side, make sure that the seam lines are lining up or the stitching lines are lining up and then just bring the pin in and back out the other side. Pin all the seams in this way. Sew the other side on in the same way. Carefully sew across the pin, but if you don't want to do that, just slide it out before you get to it. Press the seams towards the centre. And this is what it looks like on the back. Now let's prepare to quilt the block. Now technically speaking, your block should actually finish at 10 and a half inches square. My seams must have been a little bit big so I've come back to about 10 and a quarter inches. Now as our batting and backing square or my batting square is actually 10 inches, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that on top but then I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm just going to center my backing square onto the top just making sure that I've got about an even amount all the way around the edge like that and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm just going to hold it together with a couple of safety pins or you could use your quilt basting spray if you wanted to and then I'm just going to stitch in the ditch of every seam. So to quilt, I have my walking foot attached. I have a size 80 quilting needle on. I'm just using a white or creamy colored thread that blends with all of my fabrics. And I have a stitch length of three. And first of all, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch of all of my longer seams. So stitching in the ditch is when you sew on the low side of the seam. So that means on this seam here, my seam is pressed towards the right. So I'm actually sewing just on the left of all the bulk of the seam allowance. So pull the seam apart with your fingers and ease towards the foot.
So now I'm going to sew all of the points and I'm going to do that in one go. So that means I'll actually be stitching over the top of some of the stitching I've already done. I'm okay with that, but you can stop and start if you want to. Flip the block over and trim it to the same size as the backing square. Don't worry if it has shrunk a little bit because we will come back and do a final trim before we join all of our blocks together. I love these star blocks. Wouldn't it look great with a whole quilt made of scrappy star blocks? But anyway, they also look fantastic with our quilt as you go along blocks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.